Have you been the victim of the government telling people that you're dead? Has your non-death led to consequences such as loss of benefit payments, failure to get a loan, and all of your friends calling you mean nicknames like Corpse Sneak Cox, Dead Cruise, or Sponge Dead Square Past? If so, call the link on your screen right now. It won't help you with the dead thing, but it can get you a three-topping pizza for only $7.99. Alright, so here's the thing about dying. It means that you're dead. But what if, as a dead person, instead of being dead, you weren't? Well, that's basically what thousands of Americans deal with every year. Let me explain. So basically, the Social Security Administration has to keep a list of all living Americans so that it can pay them their Social Security benefits when they turn 65, or if you were born after 1969, never. But keeping an accurate list of all the people who are alive also necessarily means keeping a list of all the people who are dead, so the SSA does that too. It's called the Death Master File, and if you're thinking that Death Master sounds like the name of a bad 70s vampire horror movie, that's because it is. The Death Master File, though, is a decidedly non-vampiric dataset, and if you're watching this video, you've got a social security number, and you're dead, then you're probably on it. I say probably because the Death Master File, or DFM, is, like my ability to properly make initialisms, prone to error. That's because it's generally updated through reports and death certificates from medical examiners and funeral homes that are entered manually. So if a funeral home director slips on some dead guy juice and types in the wrong social security number, the wrong person might be recorded as dead. Now, there are some safeguards. Most of the SSA's death information comes from states using a system called EDR, Electronic Death Records, which checks the information against the Social Security Administration's numident files. So if someone's made a mistake, an error message pops up saying, hey chief, ya biffed it, and it can be fixed. But EDR isn't perfect, not all states use EDR, and the SSA also gets death data from other sources, like written notices from close relatives, all of which means that even with an error rate of less than one third of 1%, about 7 to 12,000 Americans get wrongly listed as dead every year. Daily, that's somewhere between 1 and 8 billion people a day. So what are the consequences of being dead when you're alive? Well, as the DMF is primarily a tool of the Social Security Administration, the most obvious issue is that you don't receive any Social Security payments you may be eligible for, which of course sucks because money. But the problem goes deeper than that, because the DMF isn't just used by the Social Security Administration. They also distribute it to state and federal agencies, and thanks to the Freedom of Information Act, the Deathmaster file has been public information since 1980, so it's used by a ton of private companies, credit agencies, identity authentication companies, banks, and others. And to add incompetence to injury, thanks to state rights, the SSA can't share state collected data, which generally uses EDR and is more accurate, with the public. They can only send them the federally collected data, which has a lot more errors. Hooray, federalism! But still you might think, what's the big deal? Let's say I apply for a loan and it comes up that I'm dead, I could just tell them I'm not dead. And given that being able to say I'm not dead is a pretty clear sign that you are, in fact, not dead, that ought to clear everything up. But it doesn't. That's because banks aren't worried that you're a zombie. They're worried you're an identity thief. You see, identity thieves commonly use the social security numbers of dead people for their identity thieving, which is actually pretty easy given that, as we've been discussing for the last four minutes, there's a publicly available database that posts the names and social security numbers of dead people. But because of the magic of bureaucracy, there's about a four to six week period between when someone's name shows up in the death master file and when the social security number is actually discontinued. So in that four to six weeks, identity thieves can use the still active social security number of a no longer active dead person to try to collect their benefits, take out a loan in their name, or do an epic prank on their widow. All of which means that if you're an alive person who's listed as dead and you apply for a loan or a lease or an epic prank, people will assume that you've stolen some dead person's identity and deny your application faster than you can say, you just got widowized, which is the catchphrase of your widow pranking YouTube channel. Now, typically, people can get their name removed from the Deathmaster file pretty quickly by contacting the Social Security Administration, but even if the SSA removes you from their copy of the Deathmaster file, that doesn't mean you're automatically removed from every private business's copy of the Deathmaster file. 
This can have genuinely devastating impacts. An Alabama woman named Judy Rivers was listed as dead in 2008, was unable to get a job or housing, and ended up living in her car for several months as she tried to explain to credit agencies and identity authenticators that she wasn't a deadbeat, she was just dead. But don't worry, the Social Security Administration has proposed a way to fix the problem, saying that it should be someone else's problem. The Social Security Advisory Board published a report in 2019 requesting that responsibility to collect and provide death data to federal agencies and the public should be shifted to the Treasury, who already runs a system called Do Not Pay that consolidates benefits information. So rest assured, if you're wrongly listed as dead, the federal government is hard at work arguing about whose fault it is. So assuming you're not dead, live in the US, and pay for a cell phone plan, I almost certainly know something about you. You could save money by switching to Ting. That's because with Ting, you get the same nationwide coverage as with the big cell carriers, but unlimited talk and text starts at $10, then data is $5 a gigabyte, or you can get their unlimited plan for just $45. They also have other plans with 5 or 12 gigabytes of data, but regardless, the point is that you can get the same service with the same phone number for less money. It's kinda a no-brainer, but what should really seal the deal is that by going to hai.ting.com or by clicking the button on screen, you'll get a $25 credit, enough for a full month of service on some of their plans, and signing up there helps support HAI. So regardless of whether you're a power data user or a power loser of money you overpay for cell service with, you'll almost certainly save money with Ting, so head over to hai.ting.com today.